But Time Magazine, a number of years ago, says he was scouring the gourd since 1931. Over the years, he's unearthed the bones of an ancient pig as big as a rhino. Y'all have all seen pigs like that? A six-foot-tall sheep, a pig as big as a rhino. Or you could make a killing in the bacon business, could this is a picture of one of those pigs from the Dakota School of Mines. The one on the right <laughs> is the fossil pig. And if pigs were this big, how big were the rhinos? Here's one from India, 20 feet tall. Back to Lewis Leakey's finds, illustrated here in Time magazine, we see the fossil ram that was found there in Africa, compared with a modern ram in the background. We excavated this donkey from your Lubbock, Texas, several years ago, nine feet tall at the shoulder. That kind of messes up the little horse charts, doesn't it? <laughs> That's not going to work too well, but so they leave him out. In the same area, we excavated a bison with a 12-foot horn span that stood about 11 feet tall at the hump, Y'all have all seen bisons that tall? No. But that's the way it was in the fossil record. And we see the little armadillos running around. You can see the normal size one in the foreground here in this page from a geology textbook. But notice the, uh, the writing at the bottom. This was nine times larger than present-day armadillos. Uh, just a few years ago at the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology, which... Uh, I'll be at next week down in Houston, by the way, their annual meeting. They were talking about an armadillo that they found. It was the size of an elephant. That's the way it was described. In fact, in 2004, this news release came from the BBC. Here's a Stone Age elephant twice. Now, elephants are big today. But here were elephants twice as big as the largest modern African elephant. Bones of other large animals, rhinoceros, all of them were bigger. And here we see at the inset the huge tusk for these elephants that were twice as large as modern day elephants. We're looking here at a fossil turtle that looks for all the world like modern turtles except this one was 14 feet from one side to the other. You see many 14-foot turtles running around. Here compared with a 7-foot basketball player, he uh, is dwarfed. From down Big Ben, and it's not because it's from Texas, but there is a, a big crocodile compared with a modern crocodile here, 50 to 20 feet. National Geographic had a special that dealt with the large crocodiles that were seen in the fossil record just a couple of years ago. And this is typical when you look at the fossil record. We're looking here in the center at a 14-foot shark jaw. That's a good-sized shark, but wow, look at that thing <laughs> from the fossil record. Jaws is dwarfed by such. We see the great white illustrated. That's a pretty good-sized shark, but nothing like the fossil sharks. We have one of the teeth from the large fossil shark back in our artifact room. Most of us are familiar with our little beavers, uh, they can be uh, pretty uh, aggravating as they go around chewing on branches, but think how aggravating it would be if they were 10 feet long, as is the case in the fossil record. Again, a page from a geology textbook. Here we see a picture from the uh, Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago of the 10-foot beaver. Science reported just a few years ago a real mighty mouse. <laughs> eight million years ago, the buffalo-sized rodents roamed in Venezuela. In fact, Science News reported him as Retzilla. <laughs> Glad they're not around. <laughs> this from 2005 in Syria, a camel foot that indicated a camel, according to the BBC, double the size. Do you get the point? I mean, this just goes on and on and on. This is the way it was. One of my favorites here described in Wikipedia is the demon duck of doom. Eight feet tall, 500 pounds, carnivorous. Don't 
don't want one of those things after you. From Australia, killer kangaroos once roamed Australia. Science News says they had teeth that crunched through bones, sliced off flesh. They were enormous. Why haven't you been told this in your textbooks? Because it doesn't look like evolution, does it? It looks like devolution, <laughs> devolving. And so they don't tell you about it. The ground sloths we have today, five or six feet long, but 20 feet long, and this is what the textbook says. I've seen them twice that size. This one is from the Price Museum of Natural History in Utah. I measured the hand portion. It was 18 inches. They just found one down in uh, Argentina. The hand was twice that size, which would indicate someone twice as big as this one. One of the more common fossils, especially with dinosaurs, is the cattails. We see those in Texas quite often. How tall are cattails? You might see them in Texas, pretty good size, eight, maybe 10 feet. 120 feet tall is not unusual in the fossil record. You can see the little man for scale here. Uh, you don't see that today, but it's typical in the fossil record. We're looking here at a modern cycad, a type of fern here in the Dakota School of Mines. I put the quarter up here for scale. This is their sign. But we look in the fossil record, and here from the book Fossil Cycads, true cycads were apparently quite large. One fossil from Japan is a stem over four feet in diameter. Today it's like a little you know, maximum 18-inch fern. Bugs were big. <laughs> All the bugs were big. Most of them are found in the Pennsylvania, and I think that's because it's not a time era. It is a swamp area where you find a lot of bugs. But notice, <laughs> not a few of them, not some of them, all of them. This is uh, a beautiful fossil of a dragonfly, 27 inches in wingspan. Do you get the point? Just on and on and on. We excavate, I excavated a, a cockroach from near Oblong, Illinois, uh, several years ago, a foot and a half long. My wife wouldn't let me bring it in the house. You know, it, it, it's a rock, you know, it's a cockroach. <laughs> when we look back in the fossil record, obviously we see big things when we look at dinosaurs, and these were enormous. Here's Seismosaurus, maybe 150 feet long. 